Welcome back to the channel. I greatly appreciate you guys tuning in here for part two. So before, we previously talked about egg selection. Now, egg selection is extremely important because they are your future. They are the future of your flock. So it's extremely important to go ahead and choose the right eggs for your flock. Now, it also does help for you to be able to pick a good incubator as well as knowing what temperature and humidity to go ahead and maintain your eggs at. Let's get to it. So this little doohickey right here is called a hygrometer. This is what I've been using to be able to help me with my hatches to determine temperature as well as humidity. I believe it's called the Hovabator 1588, which is my current incubator. Um, I'll show you a picture here. I've been using this the entire time that I've been raising chickens and raising quail. It's been working great for me. I don't really have any qualms with it, except for when it comes to filling the water. It's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. But that's not the main point. On that particular incubator, it does have a temperature gauge as well as a humidity gauge. I haven't reset it or calibrated it, so when I first was hatching quail and chickens, I just trusted the sensors that are on it and kind of went about my day making sure that it had enough water and that it was in you know, stable condition. Um, I was watching my fire, my, my Shire farms, sorry, um, and I noticed on one of his pages um, when he was introducing a little bit more about quail and how to be able to get better hatch rates, he showed me this. Um, so I went ahead and, and bought one just to kind of give it a try because I'd, I'd use one of those small little ones with the long little snake-like probe or whatever. That one worked okay, but it just didn't seem accurate. You know, it was definitely changing a lot more often than what was showing on the incubator. And I decided to go ahead and invest in this. This is about $12, $15, but it has been phenomenal. This will only even tell you what the highest temperature was, as well as the minimum temperature, as well as the max humidity and lowest humidity. Um, when you are hatching out your quail, you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that the temperature is set at 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit. For the first 15 days, I do keep it between 45 and 55% uh, percent humidity. Uh, but once it turns into that 16th day, which is the day that you should stop rotating your eggs, I typically go ahead and leave the temperature alone, but I boost up that humidity up to 65 to 75%. So just to pause the video right here, um, the reason why I do bring up, to bear in mind, your room temperature as well as your elevation, uh, elevation can change a lot in regards to uh, how the chicks respond to to hatching in the incubator, but the room temperature itself, you want to keep it in a room where the air conditioning or just the temperature in general is going to be stable. If it's going to be a room where there's constant airflow coming in from the air conditioner, it can go ahead and reduce the air that's being intaken into the incubator, and it'll drop the temperature inside of the incubator. If the temperature outside of the incubator is warm and it's drawing in warm air that warm air then contributes to the air that's already inside of the incubator and all this can change the ambient temperature inside of the incubator as well as the humidity now the reason why you would want to bump up the humidity on the last two days is because that's when the chicks are going to be starting to hatch you want to make the shell as soft as possible so that way they can get it out otherwise they're not going to get out and they're going to suffocate. So it's important to give them enough humidity that they can break free, but not to go ahead and suffocate them inside the eggs without enough air or with too much moisture in the air. You know, if you've ever gone on a sauna, you probably know what I'm talking about. If there's a lot of humidity, it makes it really, really hard to breathe. It kind of works the same way with them. It makes it really, really hard for them to breathe. So you don't want too much, but you want enough that it helps them, but not to hurt them. Now this does have a Bluetooth device on it, so that way you can read it directly from your phone, which is kind of nice, and so that way you don't have to keep just peeking into the incubator and taking a look at it. 
Um, if you ever do want to reset it, there's a button here up at the top. You just hold that for about 5-10 seconds, and then everything resets. So that way if it did max it at one point in time, you can reset it for your next batch. So here's the incubator that I've been using. Um, I believe I originally purchased it for about $150, and that was about six years ago. So I haven't really looked at any of the prices lately, so I don't know how expensive it's gotten, if it's gone down, or if it's kind of settled to, to a certain point. But anyways, um, so this is particularly with the Q, uh, the GQF, uh, um, also known as Genesis. Um, but you can see right here, it's the 15... 88 Hovabator Incubator. Um, over time using it, there was a little plug right here that would allow you to be able to release any kind of, um, you know, heat, humidity that's built up inside of there. That way you can kind of bring down the temperature, um, depending on, on what it is. Uh, otherwise, you can just lift it up and you can release a lot of the humidity if there's, you know, too much in there that you're noticing. Here's the control panel. This allows you to adjust the temperature. Um, this just lets you know that it's on. And then there's the reading. It'll let you know what the temperature is, as well as the humidity. So this is the egg turner that I have inside. This is actually four chickens, but the quail eggs do fit inside of this. Here's this particular model that I've got. And as you can see, the quail egg does just fit in there. So really only the the latter, only about a quarter of it doesn't fit. It goes through there, and so the rest kind of hangs out. Um, I have tried laying them sideways, but I haven't really noticed it change any, anything in regards to the hatch rate, so I just leave it pointed down. This tray holds a total of 42, um, but with chicken eggs, you can't really use the last two right here. At least I think it's the last one. Um, just because of the way that this rotates, it'll start hitting against this and it doesn't work. Now, just the way that the window is situated here on the incubator, there is kind of a, a sweet spot that I've noticed, which is about right here. where. So right here where this decal is, that does kind of cover up part of the eggs right there so you can't see. So this is the better part of the incubator that I use for my hygrometer. Now the hygrometer is just small enough that I can fit in right there. It does take up two slots, which is kind of unfortunate. But as the turner does turn back and forth, it usually stays oriented right in that spot and it doesn't move. If you want, you can go ahead and put it over the four, but two works just fine for me. The way that I have this oriented isn't the right way that I've been normally running it. Um, you could probably run this a couple of different ways, but here at the top, you see there's that notch. This was already built into it, and there is a notch right here. Typically, I will have this rotated either in this fashion, but I prefer it being down here. So right there's the notch. I like having the motor right here instead of over here in the corner. For the reason being, is the water tray down here. This cable does run up through there. So it doesn't get entangled in anything. It's just long enough that I can use it elsewhere. This is how I have it situated. Because right here, this little mesh, this is for when the chicks hatch. I usually just keep it on there just because it's nice and easy to get that tray up there. But here we have different troughs. So the center pole, I don't use anything for that. Never have. It's kind of inaccessible from where I'm at. But as you can see... There's tray four, three, two, and one. One being the biggest, and four being the smallest. On four, usually I do get that 45 to 55% humidity. And then over here on tray number three is where I get about the 65 to 75%. If it doesn't work out that way, I may use number two. But do not use both reservoirs at the same time, otherwise your humidity will skyrocket. But I noticed that if I'm once I get it get it in the tray here and it sits about 55 days, usually every three days is when I will have to refill that reservoir. And I'll notice that'll drop from 55% down to about 50 and maybe down to 45. And that's when I know that I do need to go ahead and refill that again. And then you'll do the same on reservoir three, um, depending on the kind of eggs that you're hatching. But once day 15 
and day 16 once day 15 is over um, that's when you want to go ahead and remove that egg turner and you just want to go ahead and place the eggs in whatever direction that you want I'll go ahead and leave the hygrometer around kind of more the outskirts because that's probably where a lot of the heat is getting dispersed because of this fan so this fan kind of emits everything up and down and around it kind of sucks all the air up and pushes out towards the sides so I tried to keep it around the outside to be able to make sure that I get a good temperature reading instead of right here smack dab in the middle now you'll also want to keep that in mind in regards to where you are putting this with the egg turner because um, if it's up really really high to the um, the heat reader um, or to the thermometer it is going to read differently than where the eggs are at because once it's in there it really doesn't sit too far off from it so if it's really really close up there it's going to be reading a different temperature than where the eggs are at here best to keep the hygrometer right next to the eggs so that way you get a more accurate temperature of what they are going to be registering at overall recap when you're looking for your eggs make sure you get good clean eggs ones that are just normal size good paint color all the way around no chips no cracks make sure that it's not too big and not too small get one that's just normal size something that you see about on average when placing them in the incubator you, depending on if you have one that has an automatic egg turner or not um, if you have an automatic egg turner it's going to be very very beneficial for you because this is just going to allow you to go ahead and kind of set it and forget it um, if you have a manual one where you have to turn it yourself i believe it's going to be maybe like every uh, quarter turn or it's going to be at least half a turn that way it just makes sure that the egg is getting properly rotated because if you leave the egg too long on one side the the baby chick can get stuck to the edge of that shell and make it very hard for it to break free now for the first 15 days you're going to want to go ahead and keep that temperature at 99.5 degrees it's okay if that fluctuates just a little bit that's fine um, the humidity you're going to want to keep that between 45 55 percent now on days 50, uh, 16 and 17 which is the lockdown days keep that temperature at 99.5 again a little fluctuations okay but the humidity is going to change that's going to go ahead and change between 60 to 75 percent and that just allows that chick to be able to break through that shell very very easily um, if you do really want to and you're concerned that not all of the eggs have hatched and you can see that by candling most of them are showing complete growth in there you could probably wait about 24 hours try to make sure that it does have a chance to catch up with with all of its siblings um, but usually no more than 24 hours I would wait because anything really longer than that they're most likely not going to survive but if you do have any kind of questions go ahead and drop them in the comments section below and thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it.